Hi, this is Stacy the, from The Advisor, and today I have a very special guest. I'm so excited to introduce you to her. This is Monica, and Monica has a beautiful story to tell us. You know, she has been through a lot in life, and she's had really traumatic events occur, and she has overcame everything. And you know, from from, and she's carried a, a dark soul within her because of everything she's been through. And she was able to develop the strength and the courage to overcome all the obstacles that came within her and in her pathway. And today she's here to share it with us because she wants to help others who've had obstacles in their life and had traumatic events occur to show people how to cope with life and be able to get through the hard times in a productive manner. So Monica, can you share with us a little about yourself, who you are, what you do, and, and tell everybody you know, your story, because I, I'm sure everybody's very excited to hear about your story. Sure, hi Stacey. Um, yeah, so I am an alignment coach and soul therapist. I grew up, uh, I was born and raised in France, and I grew up in a very toxic environment where there was physical, emotional, psychological, or all types of abuse. Um, it was almost on a daily basis. And um, so early on, I started to develop some physical symptoms, uh, like, for example, digestive issues. Uh, I was always anxious. Um, and um, yeah, I was always daydreaming. I always dreamed about, you know, the day that I, when I would be an adult and I would be able to escape, like my dream as a child was to escape this hell. And so, um, when I became a teenager, I started to have like really bad panic attacks and, um, all sorts of dizziness also like some sort of like low blood pressure. And, um, you know, I, I went to doctors and, uh, all they gave me was, uh, you know, like some sort of magnesium that was giving me even more digestive issues. Um, so when I was able to leave uh, my parents' place, I remember telling myself, you know, like, like it was yesterday, actually, you know, like this is not just a chapter of my life that is over. This is a book of my life. And now I'm starting like a new book, uh, like a totally new book. And when I did that, I did that consciously and subconsciously. It was a way for me to just, move on but also it was a way for my mind to protect myself um I started to do therapy but I felt like I wasn't really going anywhere uh I went and to you know like many kinds of kinds of healers and you know some were helpful and but at the end of the day I wasn't really getting to the root cause of my issues and I started to develop more and more uh, physical symptoms and I had really crippling anxiety. I had very bad panic attacks that would wake me up in the middle of the night. I would I would feel like I was literally about to die, like throat so tight, my heart racing. I felt like I can't breathe, like my muscles are completely tense. And honestly, it's just an awful feeling when you wake up, you know, like out of nowhere, like you barely know where you are and you feel like you're about to die. It's really the worst feeling. Um, Because having a panic attack during the day, I mean, it, I had those as well sometimes, but you know, like in the middle of the night when you're sleeping, it's just the worst. And so, you know, I kept going to healers and therapists and all that, but I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't healing. I really mm -hmm. wasn't healing. And in March, 2020, I had like, like all my symptoms were really chronic and I had chronic fatigue to the point that I had to take a nap in the morning and I had to take a nap in the afternoon and I would, and I would sleep about eight to 10 hours a night. Right. And I would have like my muscles were so achy, like I was hurting all over. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a total nightmare. It was during the first lockdown here in Europe. And yes. um, and when I went back to work, because, like, you know, during lockdown, we I work from home. Yeah. And when I went back to work, like they changed management and um, like the work environment started to get really toxic. Right. And um, I had a really hard time coping with everything and like a year later in July 2021 I reached burnout and wow. when I say I reached burnout it's that my mind literally broke like my body had been telling me that it just couldn't take it anymore but my mind was still able to push through yes but when my mind just couldn't take it anymore nothing was working yeah you know like I had nothing left so I reached burnout I was on sick leave um and I started to do some research because it was during the summer holidays and there was no like, you know, like 
like psychiatrists, uh, psychotherapists, all, most of them were uh, on holidays, they were away. And so I started to do some research and I wanted to understand, okay, why is it that I'm not healing? I have spent so much money, so much time, so much energy trying to cure myself. Yes. And I am there, I have burnout and I don't even know why. But when I started to do my research, I started to realize that, you know, that was, that was really the missing link, the link that my brain didn't want to see. So I just couldn't see it in my reality. Yeah. It was the trauma that I had gone through during my childhood. And it was also the part that I had never really uh, addressed right. in terms of healing. Mm -hmm. It was my body. I was completely disconnected from my body. I didn't understand what it was telling me. I didn't understand my symptoms and Honestly, for most of my life, all I wanted to do was be as far as possible for my body. I just didn't understand this body. I felt like it was not my enemy, but it was kind of like working against me. So yeah. it was really hard to have this relationship. And um, so like summer 2021, I started to, you know, really face my wounds and really start working with my body and my nervous system. And um I started to see someone uh, like a psych psychotherapist like in late mm -hmm. September and um, I started to do acupuncture. I started to do shiatsu and I was also working with my own intuitive gifts yeah. uh, and I was you know, doing some inner work on my own. And two months after that, I was completely healed from burnout. I wasn't burnout anymore. And I felt so empowered to have been able to create my own um like healing process, yeah. you know, and pick the people that I wanted to work with. Um, and ever since I've been working with, with my nervous system, because like during that summer, early 2021, 2021, I was also diagnosed with CPTSD. Mm -hmm. But after I were, it was just about two or three months. Um, I actually like, I didn't have any panic attacks anymore. Like I didn't have any, I didn't have crippling anxiety anymore. I was feeling so much more confident. I was, and it wasn't such, like a confidence. People would always tell me that I am confident, but it was more about taking, making decisions that were actually aligned with what I wanted and who I truly was. And ever since I've just been, you know, shedding layers and layers of, you know, of things that were just not me and that I had to, cope with what I was going through during my childhood so it's been you know I would say that honestly like 99% of the things that I had are completely gone like the 1% is just still me working with my nervous system and you know because some stuff will still come up once in a while and it's about but it's really about being able to deal with that because before I didn't understand my body so I didn't understand what yes. I wanted I just didn't know how to work with it but now I do so it's, so it's so much easier, you know, like, for example, if something happens and I start to have anxiety, like I know why I have anxiety. Yes. And I would say that to really heal, you have to face your wounds, which is a fact. Yes. Uh, it's, it's not about talking about it 24 seven, but it's about acknowledging that what happened to you impacted you in some way. And it's also about really having this relationship with yourself, which I think most people do not have. Like, we don't know we, who we are. We don't know what we want. Um, we kind of like go through life in autopilot and, um, you know, just doing things that we were told that we had to do. So really having this relationship with myself, understanding myself more in my body and my heart and what my soul wants, all these things have been able to like to like embody my flow, which is, I yeah. know the name of my, of my business, but that's really, that's really why I picked it. Yeah. And yeah. And I truly think that we, all of us are born to really be who we truly are, but we live in a society and we go through so many challenges yeah. that we tend to disconnect from ourselves mm -hmm. and uh, especially during childhood. Yes. And so it's really the journey about reconnecting with who you truly are and and honestly, before I used to really be struggling because I didn't know I, I would spend so much money and time and and go to all these people. But now I'm able to do the work on my own. Right. Because I know the tools that work for me and I 
I'm not afraid of my emotions anymore. Right. If something comes up, I'm not going to freak out. You know, I'm in really this being able to understand your emotions and process them is so powerful. Yeah. Because we tend to reject our emotions, especially the ones we label as negative. Yes. When actually they are here to tell us something. Yes. I agree a hundred percent. You know, our bodies are always talking to us Our, you know, they yes. are always giving us messages and I was just discussing with this with somebody else. And, you know, we, our heart, you know, is the foundation in, in my belief. And our heart gives us messages, our emotions, yes. our love, our self-love, you know, everything is in our heart and it tells our brain and our bodies give signals. And, you know, if you're, if you're feeling a certain way or something's bothering you in a certain place, that's your body signaling you, trying to give you a message that something's not right. And you need to do something about it. And we have to learn to understand our body under, and then understand what we need to do for ourselves to heal that. Now, you talked about something really important. You started to shed your past, basically. You started to shed all the things, all that hurt, all that abuse, like a, like a layer on an onion, and you just started to peel it off. Like, And how did you do that? Like For people who are going through something similar, how did you start shedding away all that hurt? And all that abuse and trauma that you occurred in your life and your childhood years going into your, your older, you know, young adult years and so yeah. forth. What would be one of the things that helped you, you think? The key for me was really to reconnect with my body. Mm -hmm. Like the physical aspect uh, was a missing link in my healing journey. Because I was doing the spiritual work. I had gone, you know, I had done therapy but I felt like nothing was working, but working with my body, mm -hmm. that was really key for me. It may not be the key for someone else, but working with my body, working with my nervous system, really understanding what my body is telling me, um, that's been extremely healing for me. I what would you say, how, how does someone reconnect with themselves? How does someone, you know, that I know it's, I know personally, it's a process. It's not a one, two, three deal. No, but it's for, a process. But for somebody, you know, since we we're, we're going to be talking about this for just a limited time on the show, yeah. what would you suggest to somebody who wants to reconnect? You know, what are some of the things that they need to pretty, pretty much put in alignment or organize it? You know, this, the most important steps that people are going to start to have to go through to, in order to get to that healing point. I would say that it starts with asking yourself questions. Mm -hmm. Like, do I really want to do this? And that really fulfill this, this relationship? What do I need? Mm -hmm. You know, like just this, when you have an emotion that comes up, like ask yourself, like, what do I need? Right. What do I need? What can help me feel better? Like when you make any kind of choices, like whether it's, you know, like a relationship or work uh, decision, like, do I really want this? You know, it's so simple, but just asking yourself these basic questions can help you know what you truly want and therefore who you truly are. Right. And that's so important. And, you know, and I, I feel too, like some people want to feel better, but then they don't want to do the work to feel better. And I feel like it, the most I important agree. thing is that you have to be willing to do the work. If you really want to change and improve your life, you really, you, ha you have to know that it's a process and it's not an easy process. But if you take the journey, you will feel so much better as a human being, don't you think? Yeah. And um, and I think that people should know that the brain doesn't like change. Therefore, if you want to step out of your comfort zone, if you want to start doing some healing work, your brain might not be on board. And therefore, it may give you some feelings that are very uncomfortable. Yes. And now I actually know the difference, you know, when mm -hmm. I do something that's, out, you know, and I could, you know, sometimes you can feel like, okay, maybe this is my intuition telling me that it's not me for me. But there's a difference between intuition and a signal that your brain sends you because it, it is not on board and it doesn't want the change. So it's also really about, like I said, working, understanding the body, but also working with the brain is so important because the brain is like a program within a computer and you have to run this program, like the yes. program is not there to run you and your life. Yes. And I, I find also too, is it drives me nuts, but so many people are, 
So, you know, their body is telling them what they need, but they're so insecure that they're running around asking people, what should I do? But, you know, those people don't really know what you need. They can, they can, you know, voice their own opinion, you know, from their own perspective, but that's not the answer. You have to look in yourself and you really have to do some deep diving work and find out what the answers are because they're there. True. True. And you have to accept that you may make some mistakes along the way and it's totally fine because you will learn, uh, you know, if it's your intuition, if it's your brain and yeah, you have to be open to make mistakes. Like your healing journey is not going to be like a, like a straight line, you know? Um, It's really, yeah, it's really about starting to trust yourself, you know? And it's a great way like this, like you said, it's a great way to start developing your intuition. You know, sit down, pause, close your eyes, let yourself, you know, ask yourself, how do I feel? What do I want? What do I need? What shall I do? And the answer should come up and it's about trying, you know, it's about trying. Okay. So this is what feels right for me. I'm going to try it. And if it doesn't work, it's okay because you're one step closer to the goal that you want to reach. Right. And like we mentioned, it, it comes in baby steps. Everything doesn't happen one, two, three. So I think we need to not be so hard on ourselves and give ourselves a pat on the back. Every time, it, no matter how big or small, give yourself a pat on the back that you actually accomplished something and you're one step closer to get into your goal, your ideal you, whatever that goal may be. You're asking yourself, who do I want to be? What What is the true, you know, the, who, who is the true Monica? Who is the true Stacy? Yeah. You know, who do we want to be in life? What is, what is going to make us happy as a person? And I yeah. think we have to close off the world and stop worrying what the world does and thinks and start worrying worrying about oh what my god yes think. especially nowadays with social media yes oh my goodness and people get so affected even the the younger you, you, i gotta say all age groups because i you know i was just talking about this with somebody else and you know it you know sometimes you know you listen to you know social media people will make remarks and and, yeah. and it will be hurtful to other people and or it'll have an impact and people will follow some bad advice. And we have to mm-hmm. realize that, you know, one, when people make hurtful remarks, it's because they're hurting inside and they want to yes. show they have pain and they want to cause others pain. And so we have to we have to have thick skin and not let those people, you know, hurt us because those people are hurting inside and their goal is to hurt others because they want others to feel the pain and they don't want to be by themselves because people who hurt want, they don't like to be alone. And then also we have to not let others, other people influence us. We have to really be mm-hmm. confident in who we are, I think, as a person, Yes. And really follow who we need to be in order to be exactly. happy. How do you feel? Yeah. You like that idea? Yeah, I think sovereignty is so important in a world where, you know, like whether it's the media or, you know, school or whatever, you know, they're like, there's, they're really like a ton of things right now going on. Yeah. And it's really about you making decision that feels right to you. Right. And it's not about, you know, like following a trend or, you know, following the crowd or it's really about making decisions for yourself. Yeah, And this is something that we have never been told as kids were told that the teacher knows better, the doctor knows better, the government knows better. Actually, they don't. They're yeah. imperfect, just like us. They're exactly. trying to figure it out. Yes. And it's really time for people to figure out what they actually want as individual individuals, because yeah. each and every one of us shape the world that we live in. And I think that we're not really in a good state. I feel like the world is going through a dark night of the soul. Mm-hmm. And it's just a, like a manifestation of the whole collective. Right. I agree with you a hundred percent. Now, if you had to give some tips on how to enlighten your soul and, you know, and try to kind of put a little bit of a light bulb underneath that dark soul and start trying to light it up, what would be some tips that you give people out there that really can feel that darkness within their soul and don't want to feel like that anymore? What would you say, you know, you know, you have to start doing X, Y, and Z and, you know, mm-hmm. maybe give them some yeah. helpful tips. Honestly, I would say, don't be afraid of your emotions. Cause I've met so many people who are afraid of their emotions. Don't be afraid of their emotions. Like the more you're going to reject them, the yeah. harder they will hit you. Mm-hmm. So just sit down, you know, 
let it, you know, just let it be. Yeah. And find healthy ways to process your emotions. Mm -hmm. And then I would say, really, you know, have a really like create a relationship with yourself, like a real relationship, like treat yourself as if you were your own spouse, your own best friend. Like, I don't know, like, it, like the person that you love the most on this planet, yes. treat yourself the same way you would treat them. Yes. Like have compassion for yourself. Like with everything that you've gone through, you have to be gentle and kind with yourself, which is a concept that I actually didn't know about before but yeah. being on this journey now I really understand what it means yes um and then I would say follow your heart like what does your heart want like yes. what makes you happy what nurtures you what brings you joy like that is so important yeah in the world that we live in like everyone is so stressed everyone is working everyone is doing a million things but what are you really doing to nurture yourself right what are you doing to bring more joy into your life because if you don't have this joy into your life like you really don't have a life at all yeah because the lack of joy or being depressed has such an impact on your physical health mm -hmm. and you know like your health is your wealth so yes. like really prioritize yourself and your needs i agree so much that's great tips now you have a coaching service that you offer people. Now, yeah. you, do you do it by Zoom so people from all over the place can access? Yes, exactly. I only do online coaching. Uh, I work on Zoom and I only do one-on-one -on -one because the work that I do is so, you know, has to be tailored to um, each, uh, each client. So yes. I don't do any kind of group coaching or anything like that. And um, that's really how I like it because it's more intimate and people get to be more open and more honest also uh, with me and themselves. Yes. And uh, so I, I like this very, very, um, you know, tiny container. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I do like unique one-on-one -on -one sessions or I have coaching programs to help people activate their purpose, which is really about, um, you know, embodying who they truly are. And also another program um, to, so they can create a life that they truly love, which is really about, um, you know, also like knowing yourself, of course, but it's also about, you know, having the resilience and the tools to create the life that you want and right. be able to face the challenges that may come along the way. Right. Now, where can people go to find your coaching service? Oh, they can find me at embodyyourflow.com. Uh, I'm also on Instagram, embodyyourflow. Excellent. Oh my God. This has been an amazing interview. I love having you on the show. I'd love to have Thank you come back. Me. Oh, you're very welcome. Because I think we can talk a lot about a lot of the topics you hit in more detail. And I love to have you back on the show. And I want to thank you so much for sharing this information because this is something thank you. a humongous percentage of our world goes through. We all go yes. through trauma in our life. It's just how we learn to cope with it. And some people, a lot of people, I should say, have a hard time you letting go of certain things that came into their lives and it's impacted them in the future. And nobody needs to live in disharmony and to live with a dark soul. We all are entitled to be happy, healthy, yes. and live a productive life and live that ideal life that we were all meant to be. Just like you were saying, we all have, we were put on this world for a reason and we, you know, life just sometimes takes us off track. And when it does, we just have to get back on track. And there are people like you who get them back on track. So I commend you. And, you know, I love to have you back on the show. We could talk more in depth about this, but we'd love to so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. And it's been a wonderful experience. You know, thank you so much. And you have, a pleasure. A, you have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.